So, John, you and I have both been playing Super Mario Maker 2 on and off for a, almost a couple of weeks now because we got it right before E3, and then E3 happened, which kind of threw off our groove with this game. But we have been playing it, you know, to some degree, uh, whether it's creating stages or playing through the story mode. I think we both beat story mode, in fact. Right. Um, and I thought it'd be good for us to sit down and just talk about this game in general. There's a lot to cover here, even if there isn't necessarily a whole lot that's unknown at this point, because looking back at the game, most of it's pretty much out there now, uh, except for maybe some of the, some of the finer details. I, I think what you've seen up to this point is what you get. And there really isn't a whole lot else for us to talk about that's, that's completely new, that's not just publicly known. Yeah, and I, I guess the point of a making game is the community as well, right? So a lot of the, the, the true soul of Mario Maker is going to come when it properly launches, and it's full of these incredible user-created levels. But as you say, there's story mode as well, and story mode provides uh, Nintendo-developed levels, and those are a lot of fun, and really showcase what this game is capable of, because they're all made in-engine. And uh, yeah, this engine is pretty powerful. Like, it lets you make some incredible, uh, flexible levels. Whereas um, Mario Maker 1, on the other hand, kind of sometimes feels like a beta version of this game. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no slopes, um, there's, it's just stuck to four game styles, there's no like night theme. So when you have this giant list of new features, Mario Maker 2 does look impressive. But there's also elements that kind of bring it down. And I'm sure we'll get into that over the course of this discussion. <laughs> I'm sure we will, probably in not too long. But before then, <laughs> let's talk about some of the highlights. And John, what is your overall favorite thing about Super Mario Maker 2 so far? What is the thing that this game does best, from your experience so far, that Super Mario Maker, that Super Mario Maker 1 didn't? So there's two things, I think. Um, the first one is slopes. Slopes sound like a small feature, but they're basically the thing that opened this game, when it was revealed that the entire selling point was slopes. And they really make levels feel a lot more vertical. Like, they're not, they're not just straight lines anymore. Uh, in Mario Maker 1, we needed to, like, um, go up a level. You have to make, like, a staircase or something. Mm -hmm. Now you can just do a slope. And that goes really well with the Koopa car as well, because you make some really cool racetracks. Uh, it just makes levels feel a lot more flexible. And you can, like, you can remake missing levels, too. There's, like, a Mario 3 level that's been missing for years, and I can't wait to see that redone. Uh, John, um, you're giving away what I'm working on! Oh, oh, oh maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe someone's doing that, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but um, my second thing, actually, is the 3D world style. Of course, yeah. Uh, this is a brand new style of 2D Mario, and it's, it feels good. They've basically they've taken the, um, the core mechanics of 3D world and applied them to a 2D game. And I think it feels fresher than New Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> it straight up does. I feel like this is what 2D Mario should be. Uh, it's just so much more fluid and fun and inventive with mechanics. Even if they are lifted from 3D World, they still feel uh, unique in a 2D setting. Especially because we've only had one game with them, as opposed to four <laughs> games with similar mechanics. Right. So yeah, I really do love the 3D World style. That's my overall favorite thing about this game, which is, I think, kind of expected because it is a big new feature of Super Mario Maker 2. And on a slightly smaller scale, I'm loving the new level styles like uh, snow, desert, jungle, and sky. And plus the fact that there's a night version for each of them, including the old ones, which effectively doubles the amount of levels available to you, except for 3D World because it doesn't have any night themes, unfortunately. Uh, but with that said, again, I really do like it, um, especially in the airship levels, how it gives it a dark and stormy look, which reminded me a bit of Mario All-Stars' take on Mario Bros. 3's airship, which just gave it a darker, more atmospheric vibe. And then, of course, there's the fact that it actually switches up the mechanics, too, whether it's going upside down or underground, or having the wind blow at you in the desert, or being able to swim mid-air in the castle. Uh -huh. uh, so I think as like as a player, Super Mario Maker 2 is amazing. Like if you just want to play Mario Maker levels, I think as you were kind of touching on earlier, this it, you it's going to be hard to top this game. There are so many more opportunities now for uh, you know in the levels you can play. Uh, it has a built-in story mode which already has you know, over 100 fantastic, mostly fantastic levels created by Nintendo themselves. And we came across some really inventive levels in that, by the way. One of my favorites was the Ghost House, which offered this hub-like item shop, almost, in which you could choose one of three different items and then carry them to one of six different sub-rooms, uh, and you had to figure out which item you needed for to solve the puzzle within each room in order to get the key and continue onward through the Ghost House. Yeah, there's a ton of really great levels in story mode, and they, just, they show you how inventive these new elements can be as well. Uh, there's one with the, um, the moving platforms that sort of go side to side based on your weight, and um, when I saw that in the trailer, I just kind of thought that people would use that for general platforming. But there's a level of story mode that uses it for puzzle purposes, so you'll have to like, um, get these P-blocks and move them around using these um, tilting platforms. Uh, and yeah, just, just the whole mode really shows you what you can do with the game. And um, yeah, there are some levels that maybe go by a bit too quickly and aren't all that impressive, but the better ones really showcase what Mario Maker 2 can be. 
And also one big element we haven't talked about as well is multiplayer. You can play with up to four people in this game. Yes. And you know, there are, of course there are some problems there because they, um, they announced in the Treehouse that they're, they're thinking about adding in um, the ability to play with friends. We can't do that yet. They better be. So we have to take their word for that. <laughs> but um, apart from that, I think multiplayer works pretty well. Yeah, because we actually tried playing it at E3. I think we had four of us in there, and it was a pretty good time. Even if, even if we were playing a stage that's designed by people who had no idea what they're doing um, from, you know, other people in the community right now who have the game, and uh, the levels were arguably not good, <laughs> but it was still pretty fun, actually, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, we did have one weirdo with us who um, reversed the controls from, like, Y to B. <laughs> What's wrong with that guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's, yeah, what's wrong? If you're, if you're watching, what's wrong with you? Now, uh, but right before this discussion, you had the chance to try online as well, where I believe you and Don are playing against each other, or rather playing together, and then playing against each other in both co-op and versus. So what was that experience like for you? So to start off with, it was fun. And I think part of the fun came from playing with someone I know, which is, that may not be the general experience for those playing online. Um, but it was fairly lagless. Like, there were a few moments where we like went through a pipe or something, or quite far away from each other. It would sometimes stutter, just a little bit. Nothing too terrible, though. Um, but there were some problems too, though. Um, during Versus, I found, if there was a level that maybe revolves around a single item, like a Koopa car, the other player's screwed. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the matchmaking just chooses any level. It ignores the multiplayer Versus tag, it just chooses anything. And there was this one level where you had to jump into a, a dry bone shell and hover over the lava. But the problem was, there's only one of them. So I grabbed the shell immediately and was just going through the level, whereas Dan just kept respawning and spawning <laughs> over the lava and dying each time. That's there was nothing he could do. <laughs> so it's, I mean, it, it, it is a lot of fun, but it also kind of messes with itself by only choosing, well, just choosing random levels. Yeah, it really should go by the uh, versus tag. And hopefully even then, it'd be nice if, and maybe it is a feature that we're just not seeing yet, but it'd be nice if it chooses the more playable stages, like if it tracks, you know, if someone is dying constantly, it doesn't recommend that level for multiplayer purposes. Right. And um, when playing co-op, actually, you get the choice to restart a level if, uh, if you're all sort of struggling or you've somehow messed the level up. So that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And also with co-op, if one of you dies, you can respawn um, next to another player, which I like a lot as well. So if you do die, you don't have to restart the entire level again. Right. But in Versus, yeah, you do. <laughs> you're sure, like working against each other. But yeah, both modes are pretty fun, and hopefully we'll be able to play them with friends in the future. Yeah, so that's good to hear that it runs pretty well so far in your experience, but granted you were only playing with one person instead of a whole cast of four, so that could affect the online experience. That's right. But early impressions seem pretty positive so far, which is good to hear. Yeah. Um, I haven't tried it myself, but I'm sure we will probably hopefully soon. So that's our overall uh, experience uh, playing the game. But, John, I'm curious about what you think about the game when it comes to the actual creation process, when you're actually making a stage. Uh, what have you thought about that so far? Because it's quite a bit different from the Wii U, in that there's no gamepad, uh, you either have to edit on the TV with a controller, or with a system in handheld form, uh, primarily with a touchscreen. So what are your thoughts on that? So with Mario Maker 1, I think understanding it was instantaneous. I demoed it, demoed it at E3 one year, and just got it like immediately. Um, I've played with friends, they got it immediately. Mario Maker 2, though, there is a learning curve, and I'm not just talking about docked. So the docked experience, I think, is generally just not the preferred way to play. You want to you build in handheld mode, yep. but even then, there is stuff to learn. And uh, I, I think Mario Maker 1 made making into a game, whereas Mario Maker 2, uh, it, it loses some of that magic and experimentation. Like, you could take a mushroom and put it on a Goomba, and it would grow. You could take a mushroom and put it on Bowser, and he would grow. You could do things you just can't do in general Mario games. Whereas now, all that stuff is in a menu, and it just it doesn't just feel like you're experimenting less, it just kind of feels less inventive. Yeah, it feels more like you just have this checklist of things or of options available to you. Now granted, you can still drag mushrooms onto things, but there's also no point now because it's the, the quick select menu when you hold down on a character is just way faster, or a character or, or enemy or whatever object it is. Um, and I agree, like, it's it's more accessible, so I like that. But just take away a little bit of the fun of experimenting and seeing what you can do with these enemies or objects, I should say. But in the grand scheme of things, while it might chip a little bit away at the experimentation that the original game had in spades, it's really not that big of a deal. For me, the bigger deal is just editing doesn't feel as, as you were saying, as intuitive as it was before. For one, the docked, exper the docked experience I just straight up don't like. I do not like using a controller for this game. It's slow, it's cumbersome, um, and you have to manually 
move the cursor around and you drag it across the screen. When you want to select a new object, you have to use a D-pad shortcut to access the menu and then scroll past every single icon to the one you want, assuming it's even there, otherwise you have to go to the uh, search option to find the one you want. Um, and then even the radial menus, which I think is, a, a, is the right idea for the controller, because it's probably the best option they had available for it. I find myself missing the um, the full screen drop down from the original game, where it just laid out everything at once that was available to you. Because there are times where I'm going through the editor and I don't actually know what I want to do. And in the original game, I could just bring down the whole toolbar and like, oh, there's all my options. Let me just you know take a look and see what I can do here. Whereas in Super Mario Maker 2, I have to page through what like 20 wheels it feels like or something. Right. And I do like being able to pin things, like I love being able to pin ground, because you can just, like that can always be there, you can just place ground whenever you want to. But you are right, like it's good just being able to see every element out there, just right in front of you. Mm. Whereas now you have to circle through all these different elements, and they are in categories, like they are in, you have like terrain, you have enemies, you have items. Uh, but sometimes you just want to see everything at once, which you can't do this time. Right. So it's a little bit trickier to find the thing you want if you don't remember where it was sorted, or if you just don't know what you want to use. Uh, now beyond that though, uh, going back to what it feels like to actually edit, so because I don't like the dock controls much at all, I've been using handheld mode primarily, and that does work better. However, two things with that. One, whenever a game makes me miss a gamepad, I'm like, wow, how'd that happen? And Mario Maker 2 is <laughs> making me miss the gamepad a little bit, because I love the interplay when with how you can edit on the gamepad itself, and then play the results on the TV by testing it out quickly. Now you can of course still test it on the, um, you know, on the Switch, like the, the functionality hasn't changed. I just miss the interplay, because I'm not a huge fan of handheld gaming on the Switch, I'm mostly a dock player, so it kind of sucks that in order to make, in order to have the best experience of creating a level, I have to play it in handheld form. I can't use a TV at all. So that's a bit of a bummer to me. Secondly, mm -hmm. using your hand isn't great. <laughs> this game, the Switch doesn't come with a uh, stylus at all, so you are primarily, or you are more likely to be using your finger than anything else if you're using handheld mode. And that isn't great because your finger is quite a bit bigger than a stylus and of course your whole hand's going along for the ride. So you're covering up a big part of the screen whenever you're editing. And it's a little bit harder to be precise, um, which I think is why they actually enlarge the grid in this game. The grid itself is actually bigger or each tile is actually bigger, which means, John, here's another one of my problems. It feels way more cramped when you're editing now in, uh, in this game because... Uh, because in the original Super Mario Maker, at, at all times you could display entire screens worth of tiles at once, with nothing obscuring them. Whereas in this case, in Super Mario Maker 2, you still have a screen's worth of tiles, but the but the toolbars, which are bigger now, they're wider than they were before, are obscuring almost uh, over a quarter of the screen. I actually did the math, it's like 27% or something, 27, 29%, <laughs> something, somewhere around there. I hate that. Now granted, they do slide out of the way when you need to access something behind them. You can also manually hide them with the X button, but it adds another, it's adding more steps that weren't there before. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of that. Now real quick, I did buy a stylus yesterday, and that has helped. I actually prefer using a stylus to anything else in this game. It's the closest to Super Mario Maker 1 that you can make it. Uh, it's still not as good as that game was when it came to editing, you know, for the aforementioned reasons, like the reduced screen real estate for the most part. Um, but it has made it a more enjoyable experience, whereas I really wasn't liking it before. I feel you. I mean, I think pressing X is a necessity when building in this game, because otherwise it's just way too cramped, especially when you're doing terrain. And I found with slopes in particular, um, all the tall bars just kind of got in the way, right. and while they do move, it, it just doesn't quite feel reactive enough. No. And um, yeah, making it as a general, it should, have ha it should have improved elements that were a flaw in Mario Maker 1, whereas those flaws are still there. Like, um, if you want to select a bunch of elements and move them around, you still have the same limitations as the first game. Uh, and I, I completely finished a level at one point, and I found that just at the end, my level I was running out of space. So what I wanted to do was just pick up a bunch of, um, of terrain and move it along. And I found I had to do it piece by piece just because I couldn't grab enough. And um, that's something that they really should have improved upon, because it, it, it can just mess up your levels right when you think you finish them. I have done that so many times in the original Mario Maker, and probably to come in Mario Maker 2, where I need just a little <laughs> bit more room, or I need to adjust something, and you have to basically reposition every element of the stage screen by screen, which can break parts of the stage if you have multiple background layers, because if too many layer on top of each other, they're just gonna start disappearing. So that is a bit of a nightmare, and I'm disappointed they didn't, they didn't really improve that aspect. The only part they kinda did is when you, is when you zoom out now, um, you can't really do anything except for select objects. And when you're zoomed out, you actually can select 
um, a two screens worth of height. It's still restricted to one screen wide, but you can do two screens tall away. So it is a little bit better in that sense, but barely. And something else that annoys me about the editor too, compared to the original, is how they changed the button shortcuts for deleting, copying, and selecting objects. In the original game, there was a button assigned for each one of those functions, you just held it down for as long as you wanted to do, to do it for, and then released it when you were done. It was super simple, quick, and worked great. Whereas now you tap the button to toggle through the various elements, whether it's multi-select or copy. And this just makes it a little bit more cumbersome of a process, because instead of doing just a quick single button press, you now have to press it multiple times to get to the one you want. And if you ever shoot it, you have to cycle back around again. It's no longer nearly as quick or intuitive as it was before. That's not even accounting for the fact that if you forget you have one of those functions toggled on, because again, it's a toggle now as opposed to something you hold down, uh, it, it just kind of complicates the whole thing even farther because you'll end up performing an action you didn't intend to in the first place. Uh, so real quick, this might be a good time to mention the fact that we are coming from Mario Maker 1. These are things you might get used to over time and we are still early on. Uh, so our impressions could change perhaps even by the time of the review. Uh, so I just want to stress that these are our early impressions so far, but uh, my, my, I, I guess at this point, John, I just haven't had a ton of fun making levels. Like, that's what's really saddened me. I just find it to be frustrating compared to the sublime experience of the original, which, granted, had it had issues its own, those issues, though, are still here. They're just more issues on top of them. Yeah, I mean, even if it were the exact same game, uh, the problem would just be the interface. It just isn't quite as fun to make on the Switch as it was on the Wii U. And there, there are things they've tried to improve upon as well. Like, you can do vertical sub-areas now, which I love. That's great. But I think the idea of them was more exciting than the execution of them for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that you can do vertical, vertical sub-areas, but I would have loved even more if they gave us the flexibility to decide how tall we want our levels to be. So in, these in the default horizontal levels, it's still just two screens tall. And that can be a problem sometimes. Like if you try to do some, some slightly taller levels, you just can't. So I would have loved if they let us maybe stretch out how tall we want a level to be or how wide we want a level to be, rather than just mixing them into horizontal or sub areas. Mm -hmm. You're kind of bringing up a good point too, is I feel like with so many of these new additions, there are some weird limitations too, that, that even though there is more options available to you overall, like with the 3D World style, the moon for instance, vertical sub areas, you, you butt up against restrictions for them far more often than the first game. Like with vertical areas, for instance, once you choose it, you're pretty much locked into it, but if you change it back to horizontal, uh, it's going to delete everything in that sub area. You have to start over from scratch, which I guess kind of makes sense. But then you have the 3D World style, which again is something I love, except for the fact that when I'm creating a stage, I usually don't figure out what style I'm going to use until much later in the creation process because I want to see you know, what physics I want, um, what, what style I'm going for with the stage, and that's something that kind of comes through the creation process, which is something I would play around with in the original Mario Maker constantly. In Super Mario Maker 2, you have to decide that from the get-go, at least for 3D, at least for the 3D World style or the uh, or the retro styles together, because if you swap between the two, either retro to 3D World, you're going to start over from scratch, and I really dislike that because I don't know what style I want to use from the get-go. And even in cases where I thought I have, I still ran into issues. Um, so, so here's an example. I wanted to make a sequel to my Super Meat Brothers level, of course, based on Super Meat Boy. And I actually started building it, and it was going well, until I realized, oh crap, there are no saw blades in the 3D World style which is something that's uh, pretty essential to Super Meat Brothers or uh, Super Meat Boy. And I came across a problem constantly where there was an element from the retro styles that wanted to use in 3D World and couldn't because a ton of the objects aren't cross-compatible and available in both styles. So another example would be the on and off blocks, which again, just don't exist in the 3D World style. So it's weird for me to feel so limited by a game which objectively or categorically has more options than the original game minus Amiibo costumes, and yet, I find myself hitting limitations and restrictions more often than before. Uh, it feels like Super Mario Maker 2 lost a little bit of the spirit of the original, which was to mix and match basically whatever you wanted. Whereas here, that is definitely not the case. Mm -hmm. And I get their explanation for 3D World in that the game's just too different, but make it less different, because that's what Mario Maker 1 did. It took elements that weren't in the original games and put them in those games. So, yeah, while I really appreciate the 3D World style, I do wish, like, it, it kind of feels rushed in a sense. I wish, they, I wish they pushed it further and just made brand new elements that weren't in 3D World to begin with. I am in complete agreement with you. I would have taken less 3D World objects if it meant complete compatibility across every game style. 
If you could have uh, Ant Troopers in Super Mario Brothers for NES, or bring in saw blades in the 3D world, I'd be down with like a net loss in objects if it meant greater interconnectivity. So yeah, it's it's weird to have these lim limitations in place in a game that really seemed to be uh, limitless originally, and that's kind of what's bumming me out right now. So I'm hoping it's something I'll get more used to, but so far as one that came from the original game, it's just been I don't know a frustrating experience. You know. And I don't want to be too down on it, because I have had a lot of fun with Mario Maker 2. I, I love playing as different characters, even though they don't really have any different properties. But it is fun just to choose your favourite character out of Mario, Luigi, Toad and Toadette, and just stick with them. Um, and people are making great levels. There are some really imaginative um, cre uh, courses out there to play. And story mode in and of itself is really fun too. Yeah. So, yeah, the, I think the player's going to have a brilliant time. It's just the creator has some frustrating hurdles to overcome. And again, this is coming from people with experience in the original Mario Maker, so it might be less of an issue for those coming into it fresh. You know, we're kind of, you know, we're kind of burdened by what we know can be <laughs> with the gamepad, strangely enough. Um, so, so the fact that Mario Maker 2 isn't an objective uh, improvement or a categorical improvement is disappointing to me. Um, especially when it didn't seem like that would be the case uh, from you know, based on the initial trailer, where it, it really did feel like they were opening up, you know, just blowing the doors off all these possibilities. Now, John, there is one other element of Super Mario Maker 2 that's kind of bumming me out as well. And I said before, when there were early discussions for what we wanted in Mario Maker 2, I said I want them to keep it weird. I want them to keep that weird, bizarre vibe the original Mario Maker had. Where it felt like the developers really leaned into the fact that they knew this was an off-the-wall Mario game. This wasn't your typical Mario, this is one where you were mixing and matching things that you could never mix and match before. Um, and that, you know, you're gonna get all kinds of weird results and creations from it. And as a result of that, they really, like, leaned into that idea where you had all these weird, like, details and easter eggs whether it was uh, having the skinny mushroom, which turned Mario into this weird, lanky, skinny version of himself, um, or you had the weird death animations where Mario would randomly uh, have this off-screen banter <laughs> when he fell into a pit. There were all kinds of Easter eggs like this, and for the most part, they're almost all entirely gone. We have a whole video going up about this, maybe it's already up, um, that talks about all the things missing, and as far as I can tell, they haven't really replaced them with anything. It feels like a much yeah. more by-the-book editor. Right, I guess Mystery Mushrooms being absent was a, like the initial sign of this, because there are like a hundred different costumes in there, and they're all gone. Um, and even the one that kind of returned, being the uh, 25th, uh, being the 30th anniversary Amiibo, um, Giant Mushroom, that's in there, but it's missing a lot of its functionality. So now it just makes Mario giant, whereas it used to put like a mus um, put a mustache in everyone's face, add like a CRT filter. That's all gone now. Yep. It just kind of feels like they've they've gone out of their way to make Mario Maker 2 kind of vanilla. That's pretty much it. It just feels like they took it out a little bit of the soul of the original game. And again, if you're coming to it fresh, this probably won't bother you at all. But for me, it's like, yeah, that kind of stands out. Like, I love just how bizarre it was, and it knew what it was. <laughs> right. Like, we were testing some stuff just before this call, and um, we've basically only seen two title screens until this point. I was like, oh, God, Andre, there's a new one. And it was just like a stack of three Goombas <laughs> just hitting the Mario Maker logo. We both got so excited, <laughs> just the fact that there was something new that we hadn't seen. Um, yeah. So we should stress, you know, maybe there's something in there we haven't come across yet. You know, some more cool little Easter eggs that are just really well hidden. Um, I've been experimenting, I haven't seen a ton there yet, so... And again, it's not even a major feature of the game, you know, it's not a, a huge deal, but it still just, I don't know, it just detracts a little bit from the experience, so... Mm -hmm. And uh, one big, actually, one, one fairly big personality change as well is, um, stacking Goombas was a pretty big deal in Mario Maker 1. And you can't stack Goombas in the 3D world style, even though that function basically originated from that style. That makes no sense to me! Why can't you stack no Goombas? Sense. Yeah, I, I have no idea. But yeah, when you when you stack a Goomba, they they just fall. And when you, when you press um, go, they just fall to the ground. It's super weird. Yeah, that that is just completely bizarre to me. Um, just some of the weird differences between styles. Which I mean, granted, those differences are what make it, the style stand out. But that's one that probably that's an element that probably should be there. So um, yeah, it's so bizarre because I really do love the 3D world style. I love the new mechanics. I love the cat suit. I like the new, the new enemies. It's just the fact that it's not compatible with the other styles that really gets to me, and, um... Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just weird to be talking about Mario Maker in this way, because I really felt like going into this game, I was stoked. And now, I'm still I'm still excited, but it's it's been tempered now by the reality of what it is. I think post-launch is going to be interesting to watch, because they've already said in the Treehouse that they're thinking about um, putting in um, friend lobbies for online. There's an extra game mode in there. So we have 3D World in the extra game mode section, there's no other game mode in there at launch. 
So perhaps there's going to be another one uh, sometime down the line. There's a lot of stuff they could fix, because Mario Maker 1 did fix a lot of his stuff after it came out. Um, so who knows, like maybe they'll add amiibo costumes down the line. They, it could happen. But we kind of have to assess the game as it is right now. And as it is right now, it's kind of... In, in some ways, it's a disappointment. Yeah, I mean, it, it is... I mean, again, it's still early on for us. We still have a week until the review. Uh, and we still have, you know... And of course, this is a game that's going to live on pretty much forever. <laughs> it's going to be around for a while. So I think these are issues that we um, that we may get, you know, we get, we may come to terms with or get more used to or find out don't, you know, may not matter a whole lot in the grand scheme of things or maybe we won't, or maybe, you know, we won't reach that point. I actually don't know. I just know that right now the differences are standing out to me and they are kind of bringing, you know, weighing down on the experience. But again, it's still early and I think as we touched on earlier, as a player, this is going to be an amazing experience. Uh, whether it's a story mode or the or the levels people are creating with it. Um, I really can't wait to see what people are able to do with it because overall, there is far more you can do in this game than the original. Minus the um, mm. mi amiibo costumes, which is a bit of a drag still, of course. But <laughs> but hey, uh, you couldn't drive a car in the original game and that's pretty awesome, so I'll give it that. <laughs> yeah, that's the big bullet point here. It really is. Uh, I don't think you can undersell multiplayer either. Like, while, while that, it, there, is, there is a hurdle online, playing locally is still a lot of fun. And you can do that on you know, both locally on multiple Switches or on the same Switch. And it makes Mario Maker, which was already a pretty fun game to rotate in a party scenario, it makes it a game you can play simultaneously now. And I, I do like that you can be more of a dick in Mario Maker 2 as well. Like, there was a point where we're playing with on-off Switches, and I put Don in a cage, and I just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that. So, yeah, that kind of speaks to you know how fun multiplayer Mario can be, even if the stage isn't created with it in mind. So... Um, John, anything else you want to you want to touch on for Mario Maker Two that we haven't said yet? Maybe anything positive about this game? <laughs> we kind of uh, brought it down a little bit there for a while. Um, hmm. I guess my closing <laughs> I guess my closing thoughts are the game is a lot of fun, and I don't want to be too negative on it because there are problems. But when you're in the moment and playing the game, I think this is one of the most enjoyable things you can do on the Switch at the moment. Mm. I think playing a great level and just going straight through it and enjoying all the new elements, that is what makes this game fun. But there, it, 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 it doesn't exist in a bubble though. It comes with the, the baggage of the slightly less intuitive editor. And yeah, while that is a problem, I still think the player is going to have a blast with this game. Yeah, I think I think as you just said, the player experience is going to be fan is just going to be unmatched with Mario Maker Two. Uh, they reap all the rewards of like none of the none of the complaints, pretty much. <laughs> so I think that brings us to the end of our Mario Maker Two discussion. So thank you so much for watching, and of course we'll have a ton more in Super Mario Maker Two coming up, whether it's gameplay videos or testing things or pointing out differences or even our review coming up very soon. So of course stay tuned for all of that and uh, make sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already for all that coverage and tons more. We'll catch you later. Bye. <laughs>